Thanks for joining us today on EMN5. Today I want to talk about CSF analysis, and I thought that the best way of doing this, since it's essentially looking through a chart, would be to look through a case that I had recently. So this is a case of a 23-year-old female. She had HIV, was on heart therapy, sometimes compliant. She presented with a herpetic rash to the V1 distribution of her face, was also complaining of some headache, fevers, and a little bit of vomiting over the last couple days. She didn't have any ocular involvement, no Hutchinson sign, but we were pretty concerned for meningitis at the time. So we first got a CT head, which was normal, and then we got an LP, which uh, we did require multiple attempts, complicated by her body habitus, so it was a traumatic tap. I believe it took about three tries. So first I just want to go through some normal values once her uh, CSF results came back, what we were comparing against. So again, a normal opening pressure would be between 5 and 17. Basically, you don't want any red blood cells or white blood cells. It should be less than 5 is considered normal. Uh, glucose should be greater than 40, or you can also compare to the serum glucose. It should be uh, between 60-70%, and protein should be less than 50. So I wanted to put the values from our case. So you can see she did have um, a traumatic tap. She had 13 red blood cells and 65 white blood cells. Her glucose was normal at 49 and her protein was high at 66. And I do want to just mention her white blood count for her serum was uh, 2,800, red blood cells was 4.5, and she had a negative gram stain on the CSF. So I just wanted to talk for a second about traumatic tap and looking at these results. We're trying to figure out if these white blood cells that we're seeing come from an inflammatory response, such as infection, or if it's from the traumatic tap itself. There's this formula that you can use. Essentially, you're just comparing the ratio of white blood cells to red blood cells in the serum to the white to red blood cells in the CSF. So using this formula, you can calculate what should be your predicted white blood cell count in the CSF. We did this for her, and the predicted CSF white blood count should be 7.8 given 13 uh, red blood cells that we saw in the CSF. And our actual CSF count of the white blood cells was 65. So I think it's pretty safe to say that this is from an inflammatory response such as infection and not just from a traumatic tap. So this is the table. This is essentially what you're going to probably look up when you're um, looking at a CSF, especially if it's not quite normal. This is good just to keep handy in your pocket if you know a good website to go to. Um, this is one I kind of put together as a compilation of a couple of the textbooks as well as uh, up to date. The normal values I have highlighted in blue, those are the initial ones I showed on the prior slide. Um, so pressure should be 5 to 17. White blood cells, you shouldn't really have any. It should be less than 5. If you have a severely elevated white blood count, you're thinking bacterial infection. And I did put over on the side there under the other category for each row some uh, less likely causes of these different levels. So under white count, if you do have a slightly elevated count, so between 5 and 100, you want to be thinking either early bacterial infection or possibly viral infection. If it's greatly elevated, such as greater than 1,000, much more likely to be bacterial. As far as glucose, a normal value would be greater than 40. And just to note that viral infections usually do have a normal glucose. If it's less than normal, you're thinking bacterial infection or some of the other examples I listed over on the side there. Protein should be less than 50. If you have a moderately elevated protein, somewhere between 50 and 250, you want to be thinking viral infection. And if it's greater than 250, much more likely to be bacterial. So I just wanted to throw her numbers on here that she had in this case. White blood count was 65, just a slightly elevated white blood count concerning for either early bacterial infection or viral infection. Her glucose was normal, it was 49, which had the other things been normal, you could say was a normal CSF. However, we want to make sure that we're still thinking viral on the list because that can have a normal glucose. And her protein was moderately elevated at 66, which again, viral infection can have. So hers was again concerning for viral infection based on these results. And she did end up having a positive PCR for varicella meningitis that came back a couple days later. So just three things to remember when looking at CSF. Any white blood count or red blood count in your CSF is abnormal. If you have intermediate results, uh, make sure you look at the ratios and also be thinking more of an early bacterial infection or a viral infection. The numbers for uh, low glucose is abnormal, which would be less than 40, and your abnormal CSF for protein would be high, which is greater than 50. Thanks for joining us today on EMN5.